Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So today is week five since my CMC arthroplasty and tendon transfer, and I want to talk about that. Yeah, so I thought I would do an update now that I'm at week five. I've also got just a couple of odds and ends I want to talk about that neither one warrants its own video, so I'm going to throw a couple of other things in here too at the end. Yeah, so week five as of today, and I did a video not too long ago about how something went in a way that wasn't as expected. So if everything had gone as originally planned, I would be getting my cast. I had a spica cast, which means the thumb was immobilized. I would be getting that off the day after tomorrow, so I'd be still wearing that. Uh, my surgeon leaves that on for five weeks, so there was a decision made to take the cast off on day 17, so I, I was only immobilized a little over two and a half weeks, and I have been since in this thing, it's called Cool Comfort. It's a splint, and I had to wear this actually before surgery, so I was familiar with it and comfortable with it already. You know, really it's going pretty well. Uh, now I have this on the other side. Most people have this on one, have it on the other. And I am going to talk about what I might do differently next time. So first of all, I want to let you see the incision. And since the cast has been off for some time now, I don't have all the, like dead dry skin. And I had surgical glue. My surgeon uses glue instead of stitches on the skin, which is really nice in terms of the way it heals and the wound comes together. It's not so great in terms of how it feels because that glue pulls and it kind of stings and burns while it's pulling. Let me see if I can get the light to focus on a little better from this direction. It's really nice and smooth. It's already flattening down. Now, of course, I've already been in OT, my occupational therapy, so we've been working a little bit on the scar. I am going to tell you about a product, and I'm going to link it down in the description box below. It is called um, Kilo Coat. So there's all different things people put on scars, like Moderna. There's so many different things. But really, if you look at the literature, nothing except for something with silicone in it is really going to help in terms of getting that scar to like flatten out, fade away, and not thicken up because the silicone is able to hold in enough moisture that it kind of tells the body there's no need for a whole lot of excess collagen right here. Now this is not ever supposed to be put on until all the scabs are off and the skin is closed. You definitely don't want to get any kind of an infection. If there's an area that seems to be coming apart, you want to check with your surgeon first. Always check with your surgeon and or your occupational therapist as to when it's time that you can start working on the scar. But I did it pretty early because I could see as soon as the skin was closed, everything was dry. I started putting a little bit of moisturizer on it, just moving the scar ever so slightly. So the scar goes this way, you move it kind of opposite, right? Horizontally instead of vertically, move just so the skin stays mobile. And after washing it, I will put on the tiniest, tiniest bit of this. So I'm just gonna show you the product. It's, you need just the smallest, that's like more than enough for my whole scar. In fact, it's hard to dispense the small amount that I need out of this tube for this tiny incision. So I'm just gonna put it elsewhere on. Leave it out, it thins out. If it feels sticky, you've used too much, really it's just the smallest amount. There is another product that I used to really like for things like this, and it's also a silicone product. It's called Scar Away, but now it only comes with a roller. So unless you wanna to try to pull the roller out while well, you only have one hand, uh, I don't really like the roller. I think it's too stingy with the product. I can't really tell how much I'm getting on there. Now, I like that the roller will work at the scar and massage the scar, but I can do that with my hand. So I really do recommend Kilo Coat, but again, ask your provider. So a couple other things I've found to make life a little more comfortable. You know, a lot of people get a lot of burning around the incision with this surgery. There's a fairly superficial nerve right there, and it can start smarting. I definitely had some of that, but I definitely also had some pulling from the glue. I think there are tiny hairs on the skin that that glue tends to pull on, and I noticed that once the glue was all off, the area that was super sensitive was really confined to one, probably a quarter of this scar. So I did not like this, even though it's soft on the inside. I, didn't, I don't like anything rubbing on it, actually. But what I found helped a lot was to get some gauze stockinette. So I think I just got this on Amazon. It's called stockinette or tubular gauze. This is two inch diameter. You're gonna think two inch diameter to put around your arm. Yes, it's super stretchy. So you just cut yourself off a segment like this. And then I cut a little triangle out of it, as you can see. And what I do is open it up. That little triangle cutout is for the thumb. You can see how much this stretches. 
And then I put the splint on top of that. And then it actually also helps me keep the splint nice and clean because I can fold, like make a little cuff down here and on the bottom. And there you go. So I, th I find this to be a lot more comfortable. Now I do usually wait a few minutes after I've put the silicone gel on because it'll kind of stick to anything that touches it. So put this on when you've got a few minutes to sort of just relax and leave your hand out to air dry. Now another thing that I found that really helps me a lot, and again you have to ask whether it's okay, whether it's time, this is only going to be after the skin is completely closed and healed and there's no more scabbing. I have found something called contrast therapy to be so helpful. So twice a day, I set myself up and do contrast therapy. And what that is, is contrast baths. So you have two bowls of water or buckets of water, something like that. And one is very cold and one is very hot. And you go back and forth between the two and it really helps with the inflammation. It makes the blood vessels squeeze shut and then dilate and squeeze shut and dilate. And it really helps to move all the inflammation and the swelling out of the area. And call me crazy, but I kind of seem to notice that the Raynaud's in this hand is actually improving. So I'm kind of wondering if this is helpful somehow to Raynaud's, like maybe that exercising of the blood vessels. I don't know. I'm going to do an experiment and do this hand too with contrast baths. For now, I'm just doing this one. I do it twice a day and here's what I do. The contrast baths should be a certain temperature range. So the cold water should be anywhere from 50 to 59 degrees. I find that if I put some ice cubes in a bowl, add some water, just check the temperature. I'm almost always in the ballpark. And then the hot water, it says, should be anywhere from 95 to 113. 113 sounds kind of random. I find that when I can get it to something like 110, I like it the most, but usually it ends up being about 107, 108 coming out of my tap. So what you do is you alternate and you do five rounds, starting with the hot, three minutes in the hot, one minute in the cold, three minutes in the hot, one minute in the cold for a total of 20 minutes, which would be five rounds. Guys, I have found this to be so helpful, like nothing helps better than that. So as soon as your skin is healed and you're possibly able, ask your occupational therapist or ask your surgeon whether you could do contrast baths. It, you know, it might not help. Maybe not everybody finds it's as helpful as I do. I can't wait until it's time to do that. So I do twice a day. Maybe I should carve out the time to do three. I have also now started to like sit down in an Epsom salt bath and like move the wrist just the slightest bit through the water. I don't push or anything. I don't do anything that I'm not supposed to do yet. So just letting it move around freely. It's kind of like that half the contrast bath, only a much larger body of water. I am going to see my surgeon in a couple of days. That's when I'll have my next post-op check and it'll be the first time I've seen him since the day the cast went on. So I am looking forward to asking a lot of questions like when can I actually get in a pool and move some water more forcefully? You know, when can I maybe go without the splint? Because you know, there's a trade-off to being kind of stiff. And my occupational therapist has several questions for him too, like when can we start doing more active things? My hands are different now because my thumb in this hand is in a different position than it was over here. And I'm going to have to like relearn how to use the hand well. I also do a few exercises called like towel walking where I lay a towel down and I walk my fingers along to grab the towel and bunch it up and then there's I go sideways with the thumb. That's actually pretty hard. I have a little game sort of these pegs and holes and I'm supposed to not only put the pegs in the holes but try to get a, a handful of pegs and roll them to the finger with the thumb. Try to handle several things in the hand at one time and rolling them forward to get a pincer grasp on them. That's still really hard to do. So the scary conversation is, what about the next side? When's it time to do that? Hey, this is a brutal surgery. So anybody who's watching this video because you're thinking about having this surgery done, you'll get to a point where you just know it's time and you just don't feel like you have any other choice. So this hand does have that same arthritis. You can see where the joint is sublux, that little kind of shoulder you see here. That's that's the telltale sign. Pain is the other thing. So pain matters more. You might see a lot of people that have this and aren't feeling any pain. Like why fix something that doesn't feel broken? I have pain on both sides. I recently had a steroid injection in this side and it's feeling great for right now. I don't know how long that's going to last. In the past, I haven't been able to get that steroid injection to last months, but you know, we'll see. I would love to be able to get some downtime in between the two surgeries. I know some people do them back to back, but just in general, the overall deconditioning from having, you know, being in a cast or being immobilized or being limited in some way, you can't exercise the way you can when that's not the case. 
uh, other era, aspects of your life suffer, and I would just like to get some good quality life and get reconditioned again before it's time to do this one. It won't be quite as much of an insult on my body. The question comes up, am I going to do things the same way? I don't know. You know, one of the questions I'm going to ask my surgeon is, what will he do with me if we go to the second hand? Like, will we start out with the same plan A, which would be five weeks of immobilization, or would we, knowing what happened and how things went with me, do the same plan, which is like two and a half weeks of immobilization? You know, in my area, any of the surgeons that I'm familiar with immobilize for four, three to five weeks. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of variation here in my area. Now, I don't have to stay in my area when I have the other surgery done. You know, one thing that I'm reading and I'm learning a lot from the Facebook page or people who have had this surgery is that... It's becoming more and more widely accepted that the longer the period of immobilization, the longer the healing. And that kind of makes sense to me. And after going through what I've been through, yeah, I can definitely attest to that. Some of them are really immobilizing people no more than two weeks. Two weeks, then in a splint, and then get moving, get, get going with occupational therapy. You know, that's sounding more palatable to me now that I've been through this on the one side. So I like my surgeon. I know he gets good results. And I've said before, you know, find somebody who gets good results and then let them do the work the way they normally do the work. That is going to be something that I'm going to have to think about if when I talk to him and say, hey, what do you think about doing the second side? How would you do it? I feel that for me, at least, the earlier mobilization was very helpful. And I can see how it would be even more helpful if that were the plan. So anybody watching this, you know, I always collect all these different bits of information from people in the in the Facebook group dealing with the thumb CMC joint arthritis. But if you're watching this video and you've had this done or you're thinking about having it done, you have an opinion on that, you've talked to a surgeon about that, let me know everything in the comments section. I'm so interested in gathering more information. I'm kind of trying to do my own sort of very unscientific poll here uh, to see if there is a correlation between how quickly people recover, what kind of pain they have for how long, based on whether they were immobilized for a long or a shorter period of time. Now, I it's totally acceptable to have pain early on. I, I, you know, that's not something to measure the experience by. But how quickly that pain starts to go away, how you work through it, and what your result is in how much time, I think is pretty important. Yeah, so feel free to put down in the comments section any other tips and tricks you can think of that are helpful, that help you feel better, that help you get better sooner. I'm also interested in any more discussion about having one surgeon do one side, like if you had somebody else do the other hand, how did that go? Of course, it'll give you a lot of things to compare, not just the one variable you were thinking about. In my case, the immobilization issue is just so important because it seems that, I don't know if it's my age or if my overall arthritis elsewhere, but being immobilized is just leaves me so predisposed to pain. And you know, the next time it's gonna be my dominant hand because this is my right hand. So when I have to do that, certainly if there is a better way to do it with less immobilization on my dominant hand, I would be absolutely thrilled. Going in, that would be already a plus. And then I just have a couple of other fun things that need the one that warrants its own video. One is a follow-up on a recent video I did about a sunscreen that I've been using on my face. It's the Ole Regenerist All Mineral SPF 30 sunscreen. I got a lot of questions about that in the Facebook group and a lot of suggestions. So it turns out a lot of you guys are also committed to having an all mineral sunscreen. I am on my face. I haven't gotten there yet with like the whole body, but I've been using an all mineral sunscreen on my face now for years. I don't want any of the chemical sunscreens on my face. I figure on my face is somewhere where I'm putting the sunscreen on every single day. People did have some other suggestions about products they thought were really good and were all zinc, or I think some of them were zinc and titanium. Comment in the comment section, if you will. Maybe at some point I will try several different ones and do some sort of a comparison. Now, I am really liking this Olay. It's a 17.5% zinc oxide, which I think is fabulous and an SPF of 30, it goes on really nicely. I have now used it under a full face of makeup. I have some makeup on today. I don't have like a full face of makeup, but it's down under what I've got on. And I just think it plays nicely with others. It's comfortable to wear. It doesn't feel like the thick sticky stuff that usually you expect the all physical sunscreens to feel like. I am interested in trying some of the others that people have had to offer. So maybe I'll do that at some point and or do other reviews or be able to make some kind of a comparison. There was also a question about what about for the body? Now that's a tall order and somebody actually asked about spray. So if it wasn't hard enough to find an all mineral sunscreen that's emollient enough to put it all over your body that you could actually afford by the way, then try doing that with a spray with something like thick like zinc. So 
I am always on the lookout for something like that. I have to say, guys, I so far haven't found it. What I am still using on my body is a CeraVe, which is a mix of a chemical and physical sunscreen, but the chemical does avoid the avabenzone, which is the really bad one, but it's not perfect either. And honestly, it doesn't spread as nicely as the chemical sunscreens do. It still spreads kind of thick like zinc. I'm still on the lookout for a product that would be emollient enough and spreadable enough to use for the body. Let's continue with that conversation, shall we? And finally, I just had this one like really random thing that's so nice I wanted to share it. So I'm getting ready to paint in my house one of these days. I decided this the house most rooms in my house need to be painted. Now in the past when I have repainted, I have narrowed things down to a certain number of colors and then I went to the store and got samples, those little paint cans that are like usually about 10 bucks and painted the sample on the wall. But the, you know, the sample is not like the same product as regular paint that you're gonna choose so you don't get that same exact look that it's gonna be when you choose it. And it's also, come on, let, let's be honest, it's a mess, you put it up there, then it's there, right, until you get painting. So I found this company called Sampleize, and they sell these sheets. This is just painter's tape I have on here, which you don't even need for the product. They sell these sheets. They sell 12 by 12 sheets of paint products. It's actually made with the actual paint, and it's got an eggshell finish, and it's got texture on it that's kind of like a wall. And they really have just about any color you could look up by Benjamin Moore, Sherwin-Williams, Furrow and Ball, and I, anybody else. I, I never looked for a color that I couldn't find. They do peel off and stick, so there's a backing here that peels off and you can stick this to the wall. Now they say you can take it off and then stick it somewhere else. I found there were a very finite number of times you could stick these to the wall, and they were also quite flimsy, not like saran wrap, but it was real easy to get them kind of stuck on each other. It's not like it looks on the website. So enter painter's tape. What I do is I take a piece of painter's tape and I tape that to the sample and I tape this sample up on the wall and then I really can move it and use it pretty much indefinitely. So I've, I've like got these squares all over the house with like all different colors. So my husband keeps saying every time he turns around the samples have moved, but I, I really think this is great. They're $5.95 a sample. So like the can of sample paint is like $10. So this is a little more than half of that. And you really only have to buy, I think it's $15, so that's three of these. You're at $15 to get free shipping. And they ship in like the US mail priority, so it's usually here in like two or three days. How do, how do I know? Because I, I've done this already a couple of times with them. So yeah, that's not really its own video, is it? But I, it's just a life hack that I found and I'm finding I really like it. I thought I'd share it, maybe it's helpful. So anyway, let me know if this was helpful. I will do another follow-up sometime shortly after I've seen my surgeon, maybe in another week or so. And let me know how you guys are doing it. Those of you who are considering having the surgery, those of you who've had it, I know some of you have been communicating with me are just like a week or two behind me. So it's always fun to compare notes and it's really helpful for me as well. So until next time, be well, bye-bye.